Hi, and welcome to Home Assistant How-To with Bearded Tinker. This is the part 2 video of DIY Zigbee Remote. Today, we'll be pairing it and adding it to Home Assistant. Before we proceed with today's video, I really would like to thank all the members who have joined my YouTube channel. Thank you all for all of your support. But I would like also to thank everybody who subscribed, liked or watched my videos. If you too want to add additional support, you can always become a YouTube channel member by clicking join button down below. This project and this video has been sponsored by PCPWay. If you need PCBs, something CNC, 3D printed or PCB assembly, you can always go to PCBWay. In the previous video, I showed you how you can DIY Zigbee Remote Control. But what's DIY worth if you do not add it to Home Assistant? So today we are going to play and add this to Home Assistant. I did say that this device is supported by Zigbee2MQTT and the link to the device page in the Zigbee2MQTT device list is down in the description of the video. As you can see, it supports 8, 12 and 20 button version. Exposes battery, action, switch type, switch actions and link quality. Now let's talk about pairing the device because this is something that we will have to do. If the device itself is brand new, you just solder it, insert the battery, it should be in a factory new state. And as you can see, if device is in a factory new state, you can just press and hold button 1. And if you do not know what the first button is, let's turn remote like this. On the back side you can see battery. And the first button on this side is button number 1. So if you press and hold it for 2-3 to three seconds in a factory new state, it should start the pairing process. And you will see that by the flashing LED. If you did previously pair this device and want to pair it once again because you maybe, like me, removed it from the Zigbee 2MQTT, all you have to do is you have to hold the button, button number 1, for 10 plus seconds. And after 10 plus seconds, once again the LED will start to flash. Once you have started pairing process on the side of the remote, all you have to do is press permit join inside the Zigbee 2MQTT. And as you can see, our device has been added. First thing I'll do, I'll rename it. I will call it FreePad. Let's save. And now it should be also renamed inside Home Assistant. And if your Zigbee to MQTT and MQTT have been configured and integrated inside Home Assistant, here in the list of MQTT devices, we should be able to see FreePad. And here it is. Device FreePad, manufacturer is DIY RAS, and the model is DIY81220 button keypad. Let's press on it and let's see what we can get from the entities. Ok, before we go any further, let me now explain why you will see a lot of entities here. First of all, my device has only 8 buttons. Yours can have 8, 12 or 20. But unfortunately, the device itself doesn't know how many buttons it has. So the integration or the firmware thinks that it has all 20 buttons. So we should have at least 20 entities and maybe something more. For example, FreePad Action, which is the action that you will see change here when you press the button, FreePad Battery and of course Link Quality. But as you can see here, there are a lot of other entities. So what's the deal? The deal is for each and every button on the remote, you have three entities. One is FreePad Switch Actions button, where you select what will be the action of the button itself. It can be either on, off or toggle. So what will be the case? So for example, if you've made remote with eight buttons, you can for example program that this button is on for the light and this button is off for the light it will only trigger on or off state. But you can also configure toggle. 
toggle means change the state. So if I select here toggle, I can both turn on and off a light with this button here. Let me first clear the list and remove all the buttons I do not have. Okay, I did cheat a bit now. I did sort out everything here so that I don't overwhelm you with all the entities. And there are really a lot of entities. I did disable and remove all the entities that do not match my remote, so the buttons from 9 to 20 are gone. Then I did also enable some of the devices, such as switch type and switch actions button. So now I have three entities for each of the buttons, plus free pad action, free pad battery and free pad link quality. Before I go any further and overwhelm you even more, let's jump back to Zigbee to MQTT. In the documentation, if we go and see what this device exposes, we can see that we can read the battery state, which will be percentage of the battery left, action that can be either single, double, triple, quadruple or release. There is additional action called hold, which I don't know why is not listed here. And hold plus release are great way to dim or control the light brightness. So while the action is hold, you can decrease or increase the light level and stop doing that when you get the action release, meaning holding the button, holds the action and releasing stops it. Now let's look at what buttons can be and what types they are. So switch type for each of the buttons can be either toggle, momentary or multifunction. Toggle is toggle of course, momentary is what momentary says, you press it, it has action. And my favorite is multifunction. Why? Because multifunction allows you for each and every button on the remote, either 8, 12 or 20 to have single, double, triple, quadruple and hold and release, meaning you can have at least 4 actions for any button, 32 actions on a single 8 button remote. And I challenge you to find me any ready-made Zigbee remote that has that many actions on that many buttons. The other thing that I mentioned is that every switch can have action and action can be on, off or toggle. And once again, as I said, I prefer toggle. That allows me to control both on and off state of one single light on one button. Let's jump back to Home Assistant. So now that we have all the 8 buttons, or 20 buttons maybe in your case, added to Home Assistant, let's add them to Lovelace. In the Lovelace UI, let's check what we can see and what happens when we press one of the buttons. First, let me click on the free pad action. And here you can see various actions depending on what action we do. If I would now press a button, you can see that it blinked shortly and said button 1 single, because I did press button once and it was only a single click. If I do double click, you have seen probably that action was button 1 double, quadruple, and let me press and hold and release. So these are the six actions for each of the buttons on this small remote. You would normally not add the remote to Lovelace UI, but here it allows you to control the state of the actions and also type of the button. As I said, you can have toggle, momentary and multifunction and I did select for each action to be toggle. Let's once again click on free pad action and select this time attributes. As you can see, all the 20 buttons are here and unfortunately you have to remove those buttons by hand if your remote doesn't have them. I didn't do this for the purpose of this video. But you can see that switch action for buttons 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 has been configured. And I also did configure switch type button 1 to be multifunction. We can see what's the last scene, link quality, a battery, and if we are lucky enough, we can see button 1 single press in the actions. Normally, for switches, you wouldn't add them here. 
but I just wanted to add them here so I can show you what's under the hood. And what's under the hood is the best thing of this device. So with 8 buttons you get 32 actions, plus hold and release for each of the buttons, of course, if you configure it. And how would you go on and use it? It's up to you. I really cannot think of all the automations that can be created, but the simplest one, of course, can be the actions to turn on and off your lights, turn on and off your TV, change the channel, start playing something or whatever you fancy. And let's create simple automation. For this, unfortunately, I will have to go to my recording setup. In automations, let's press add automation, start with empty automation, call this free pad. And now let's play with the triggers. As you know, Home Assistant now supports trigger IDs, so you can create multiple actions or multiple triggers inside one single automation. And we will be using that one here. Trigger device. Device will be free pad. And for the trigger actions, let's select button one single. Trigger ID will be single one. That way we know that this is a single press on button one. For the actions, let's select here, choose. Option one, condition, trigger, single one, add action, device, Elgato, turn off. Let's go back to triggers, add additional trigger, device free pad, button two, button one double, trigger ID will be double, one, And at option two, condition, trigger, double, action, let's leave a device, Elgato, and let's select this to be turned on. Brightness, let's put here 75 for 75%. Let's save this. And now, if you press button one once, the light will turn off. If we press it twice, the light will turn on. And that's it. You can simply add inside one automation all the triggers. And let me add one last automation. Add trigger. Device will be free pad. This time I will select button one quadruple. Let's go to options, add option, add condition. Condition will once again be trigger, trigger will be quadruple, add action, device. Elgato 1, turn off, add action, Elgato 2nd, turn off, save, press 4 times button, 1, 2, 3, 4, both Elgato lights have turned off. And yes, this small but powerful device can do a lot of actions on the one CR2032 battery. In terms of the battery, unfortunately I myself still cannot tell you what is the expected life of the battery. I did hear that it can last only a couple of months, but unfortunately I myself still haven't used it for a couple of months to be sure of that. If you have any idea or suggestion how to improve the usability of this remote through automations, please let me know. Either drop down line in the comment section below or find me on the Discord server. And yes, don't forget to join the Discord server. If you still have any kind of a comment or a question, 
you can find me there, on the Discord server, or leave a comment down in the comment section below. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future video updates. If you did like this video, please give me a thumbs up. It not just means a lot to me, but it also helps a lot with the YouTube algorithms. And I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.